Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a talk through the convex hull function in Blender. So this came up in a chat with a patron recently, and it seems a good thing to do a video on because this is an awesome function, but I think people don't quite realise what exactly this can do. So we're going to have a quick talk through the function, how it works, what it does, and then have a look at a couple of instances where you might want to use this to make your life a little bit easier. And then to finish with, I'll show you something really cool and we'll talk about that later. Anyway, so the convex hull function, if I just shift and D to duplicate this and we'll just X to bring it across and let's just scale that up to make it a bit bigger, is a really cool function. So what I'm gonna do is select both of those and press Control and J to join them together because it works on one individual mesh, even if it's made up of separate parts or components that are separated and not necessarily joined together. Now the way I like to think of the convex hull function is as if I was wrapping up these shapes and they couldn't move very tightly in cellophane. Notice I'm really trying hard not to say shrink wrap because obviously that's a different function. But effectively what would happen is that we would have obviously this side and then this side there and then that cellophane would stretch all the way here to that furthest point because it sticks out further than this side here. And then it would carry on round, do exactly the same thing and then back and then here. And then obviously it would do that on each and every axis. So let's just quickly talk through this. So we've got our object, oh, I seem to have unjoined those, and then we'll go into vertex mode, but this could be any sort of edit mode. We then go to mesh and then convex hull, and you can see what that has done here. And if I just go to x-ray mode, you can see that this has made a really nice manifold object, but if we chose to, we could bring back the unused bits of geometry just like that. And you can see it's done exactly what I showed. So that's the way I like to think about it. Now, if we just move some bits around, so for example, let's just move that up here and then maybe move that off to the side. We'll see that this will do exactly the same thing. This time I'm going to hit F3 and type in convex. And we've got that option here as well. Click that, come out of X-ray mode, and we can see that we've done exactly the same thing but in that new direction. So this has got some really nice functionality to it. The other thing that's really important about this, if I go into face mode and delete out that face, is that this will work on objects that aren't manifold and it will create a manifold shape. So a mesh convex hull, and you can see we've got this manifold shape. Now, I will also mention you can click join triangles, turn that off, and you get this bit more triangulated. But I generally don't find a massive use for that, but that is an option there as well. Finally, is another use, let's just select all of these, and we'll just delete that out, is that if you've got an object here, and again, that's not manifold, you could use that mesh and convex hull to turn it into a manifold object. Obviously, this would have been very simple to solve by just creating this face, but this can work in more complex geometry as well, again, as long as you're bearing in mind that idea of it shrink wrapping around the object. And this can obviously be used to do some very fun things. Let's just bring in a quad sphere. Let's just scale that up. And then let's, I don't know, shift and D, and then we'll bring one out over here. Let's just scale it down. Let's just bring it in a bit more. And we could do something like, I don't know, make several more of them. Let's just do another one there and another one there. Obviously this isn't perfect. Select all of them. Control and J to join them together. Go into any object mode, mesh, convex hull, and we get this really cool shape. So it is very useful and it's got a lot of functionality to it. Like I quite often, if I'm going to sculpt something weird, can start off with an object I've made with a convex hull. But there's two uses that I use this for in particular that I thought I'd mention. So my first use for this is let's say I'm bringing in a cylinder, we've got that in 64 vertices, and I want to basically make an elongated shape. So what I'd do is go into vertex mode, and do what a lot of people do, grab those, G and then Y, and then we've got our elongated shape, great. Except for actually, there's a quite big problem with this shape, and a lot of the time it gets ignored, and this for 3D printing can be a bit of a disaster depending on what you're trying to do and how precise you're wanting to be. If we go into vertex mode and x-ray mode, you can see here this vertex is dead on this line, this sort of slightly grey faded line that you've got here. Hopefully that will show up nicely on YouTube, even though it's got a bit of a compression to the video. Now, if I carry on to have a look at the vertex that's here, 
you can hopefully see that this is not on that line. And this sounds really obvious when we go back to this. Let's go back to where this was a cylinder. And obviously it is. I mean, that's the vertices that are further out in the x-axis. So of course this one's not going to be on the line. But this way of making this elongated shape is going to create this as a problem. And yeah, we could have less vertices here. So we don't have that. Effectively, if you don't have this one, you have two that are equal. But I like using multiples of four vertices. So 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, and so on. Because there's positives to using those. So actually, if I wanted to make that elongated shape, what I should be doing is A, Shift and D, bring it along the y-axis however much I need, and then A, Mesh, Convex Hull, and we're doing away with that problem. Now, let's delete the unused geometry. We do end up with this problem that we get all these triangulated faces. This is actually very easy to do something about. All we need to do is hit X, and then do a limited dissolve. Now, that will automatically start on five, and you can see, is that gonna cause some issues? Yes. So we've got an issue here where this was under five degrees. So I'd normally change that to something like one. And yeah, we end up with this Engon here, but I don't really care about Engons. It's for 3D printing, and if you do care about Engons, then you can solve this by doing a grid fill or something like that. So this isn't a big problem. And it's much less of a problem than this issue of this edge not being actually exactly straight on one axis. Now, there's another way of solving this problem if you've got this here as well. If you've got hard ops, you can just hit Q, operations, and clean mesh, and that'll do exactly the same thing to basically half a degree, which is a little bit better straight off. So just a little bit of a quick way to do that if you've got hard ops as well. So that's the first way we can use this. The second way I think is even more fun. I'm just going to bring back this example. We're going to come and have a look at this. And we're going to imagine that I'm making some sort of, I don't know, machine here. And this is the engine. We've got this cylinder that we're going to rotate, which will rotate this band, which will rotate this cylinder here. And we want to have a band so that these other cylinders will get rotated as well. And this convex hull makes this very easy. If we were to do this manually, we're going to go into edge mode and start guessing where sort of tangents would be and be like, I think that edge there would probably go to about there. Let's F and no, that's maybe that's OK for that one. Yeah, that one doesn't look quite right. And we're sort of guessing this. It's going to take longer and we're guessing it. So it's not exact. What we can do with this convex hull function instead is go into face mode. Let's just select all of these faces. Note that this is one object at this point. I've joined them together. Shift and D, escape, so that they're here. P, and then by selection. And then we go into object mode, and we've got the object that's overall, and then our bit here as well. So that's our separated part. Now we can go into whatever mode. I'm going to go into face mode. Let's come here. Let's A, and then we're just going to S and Z to shrink this down a bit. And then... Mesh, convex hull, and we get this perfect shape around the outside. We're not guessing at where the tangents are going to be. This will work perfectly. I'm going to do the same thing again. So X, limited dissolve. I'm going to go into face mode. I'm going to select that face there, that face there, and we'll delete those faces. That leaves us with our band. And we want to probably add some thickness to this, especially if it's 3D printing. So let's come here. So I've got this old modifier menu you can do it in the normal way if you want to so I'm going to come here and then I'm going to go to solidify and then I'm just going to solidify this a bit so there and that leaves me with this band that we're going to be able to have going around this object now if this is for 3d printing you are going to have one issue which I want to highlight and that is that this function is almost too perfect if we come here you can see that these edges and faces are going to be exactly on the faces of this cylinder as well and that will cause some printing issues for some programs. So what I'm going to do is just go to Object, Set Origin, Origin to Geometry, and then I can just S and scale that in the tiniest bit so that there's a little bit of overlap just there. Okay, so we can see this tiny bit of overlap, which will mean that this will 3D print perfectly fine. So that I find a really useful function if you're doing some sort of machinery and you want these belts that are going to be driving different parts of the machine.
So that's the basic functions and uses of this pretty much handled. But I do want to just emphasize something that's really cool with this that I'll show you. And that is that we can also do the same thing using geometry nodes. And geometry nodes also have a convex hull function. Now I'm not going to deal with this today. I'm going to be a bit of an advertising genius and say if you're not subscribed to the channel, do subscribe because we're going to be doing something really cool with this in a later video. And that is that if I hit Shift and D to duplicate this, escape, and then I'm going to bring in a little chainsaw tooth that I've made. We're going to make this sort of chainsaw blade from something like Warhammer 40,000. And all I'm going to do is come to my modifiers, geometry nodes, and I've made this geometry node setup called Trackify, which originally was there to make things like tank tracks. If I click that, I'm going to click here and then instance my object, and we get that instanced as if it was one of these belt type bands except for now it's got a load of instances of this and I can change that up or down if I want more or less of them to get the fit just right that looks perfect to me now in this instance I've got the origin just here so you can see there's a little bit of overlap so once again I might want to bring that to the geometry so that's using machine tools and I could just scale that up slightly but that's up to you. But either way, you get how well this works. And this is using a geometry node setup that I've created myself. And we'll talk about that in a future video. Now, if you're really impatient, that video is going to be up on the Patreon already if you're watching this on YouTube. Because to say thank you to the wonderful patrons that support this channel and allow me to have the time to make all these videos, I always put the videos up on Patreon a week ahead of time ad free and there are other really cool perks as well so if you are impatient and want that video straight away feel free to head over to the patreon there's a link in the description or if you just want to help support the channel a little bit more then feel free to join up to the patreon as well and it really does help out so really i can't say thank you enough to the patrons you are absolutely fantastic for allowing me to create these videos if you are interested in that and you found this video worthy please do hit that like button Again, it really helps share this around on YouTube and get some more views for the video. Have a great day, guys.